Hello everyone, I'm Aratrika Bhomek and I welcome you all to another episode of Quotes Today on Live Law where we update you about all the important legal developments that took place across the country today. We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court and will then cover High Courts and other lower courts. If you like our content, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Supreme Court today allowed an interlocutory application seeking to have alleged conman millionaire Sukesh Chandra Shekhar appear via video conferencing mode before a CBI court in Chennai in a money laundering case registered against him. The application was filed by investigating agencies in a writ petition filed by Chandra Shekhar and his wife seeking their transfer from Tihar jail to a prison outside Delhi. The bench of justices UU Lalit, Ravinder Bhatt and Sudhash Dhulia allowed the application. The Supreme Court today adjourned the special leave petition filed by Tamil Nadu Director General of Police against the order of the Madras High Court which transferred the investigation in the case relating to the suicide of a girl in Thanjavur to the Central Bureau of Investigation. A bench comprising Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Bela Trivedi said that it will post the matter for final disposal in October. The High Court had ordered a CBI probe in the matter after taking a critical view of the local police ruling out the allegations that attempts at religious conversion were the cause for the suicide of the girl who was studying in a missionary school in the Thanjavur district. The Supreme Court has strongly condemned the conduct of certain officers of the Indian Army in Second Darbad for encroaching upon a civilian's property near the army quarters and raising down its boundary wall in violation of the injunction orders of a civil court. The court was considering an appeal filed by the Union government through the Defence Estates Officers, Andhra Pradesh Circle and the General Office in Command challenging an order passed by civil court in Secunderabad in January 2021 by which a major general and a defence estate officer were sentenced to two months civil imprisonment for violation of the injunction orders. The Union government approached the Supreme Court after the Telangana High Court refused to stay the civil court's order. When the matter was taken up for hearing, Chief Justice of India N.D. Ramana orally deprecated the conduct of army officials in harsh terms by remarking, and I quote, Defence forces are meant to protect the country and not to attack the individuals. Conduct such lawlessness using bulldozers, etc. On the third day of hearing the EPF pension case, the council appearing for the pensioners from Kerala questioned the veracity of the actuarial reports and other documents furnished by the Employees Provident Fund organization, which pointed out that implementing the Kerala High Court judgment of 2018 would cause a net actuarial deficit of 15,28,509 crores in the pension fund. In 2018, the High Court, while setting aside the Employees' Pension Amendment Scheme 2014, allowed paying pension in proportion to the salary above the threshold limit of Rs 15,000 per month. A bench comprising Justices UU Lalit, Anirodha Bose and Sudhash Dhulia was hearing the appeals filed by the Employees' Provident Fund organization challenging the Kerala, Rajasthan and Delhi High Court judgments which had quashed the 2014 amendment scheme. The Supreme Court today refused to entertain a writ petition challenging the permission granted to members of Sikh community to carry kirpan in domestic flights. The bench asked the petitioner to move the jurisdiction High Court instead. The petition was filed by an organization named Hindu Sena which challenged the exemption given to Sikh community by the Bureau of Civil Aviation Security as discriminatory. The petitioner challenged the order issued by the Bureau of Civil Aviation Security on March 4th which stated that Kirpan may be carried by a Sikh passenger on his person in domestic flights provided the length of its blade does not exceed 6 inches and the total length does not exceed 9 inches. The Supreme Court today expressed dissatisfaction with the counter affidavit filed by the Union government in response to a writ petition which seeks guidelines for the seizure of personal electronic devices by investigating agencies. We are not satisfied with the counter and we seek a new and proper reply a bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and M.M. Sundresh observed in the order. The bench said that the centre should also refer to the international practices in this regard. 
the matter will be heard next on September 26th. The Supreme Court today granted interim protection from arrest to Z News editor Rajneesh Ahuja in the multiple FIRs registered over the airing of a doctored video of Congress leader Rahul Gandhi. The court issued notice to the states of Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh and the union government and ordered that no coercive steps be taken against the petitioner with respect to the existing FIRs and future FIRs which are registered on the same subject. The court allowed the investigation to proceed in the first FIR registered in Jaipur but stayed the investigation in the subsequent FIR registered in Raipur. The Mumbai Metro Rail Corporation Limited today told the Supreme Court that no cutting of trees has been carried out in the RA forest region in Mumbai. The court was hearing a batch of applications filed by activist residents alleging that the authorities have resumed the tree cutting in RA forest region contrary to the status quo ordered by the Supreme Court in November 2019. The bench comprising Justices Yuyu Lalit S. Ravinder Bhatt and Anirudha Bose said that in view of the stand taken by the Mumbai Metro Rail Corporation Limited, there is no requirement for any interim order to be passed by the court. The matter will be posted for disposal on August 13th. The Delhi High Court has called for a meeting for working out the modalities to include the names of all the proclaimed offenders and the proclaimed persons on a user-friendly portal on the internet. Justice Talwan Singh has directed the principal district and sessions judge to hold the meeting between August 16th to August 30th and added that the same must also be attended by the DCP legal, DCP crime of the Delhi police, responsible officers from interoperable criminal justice system, national informatics centre, chief metropolitan magistrate from at least three districts, one additional sessions judge and one special judge of the CBI court. Dealing with a case related to the 2020 Delhi riots, a Delhi court has called for sensitization of investigating officers on making the photos obtained from digital sources as admissible in evidence by filing a certificate under Section 65B of the Indian Evidence Act. Additional Sessions Judge Pulastya Paramachala ordered that all investigating officers are required to be sensitized in this respect and that it is high time to control the casual and callous approach of investigating officers. The court also expressed displeasure over casually preparing site plans by stating that the preparation of the same were not even expected in cases triable by the Metropolitan Magistrates. The Kerala High Court today resolved its verdict on the bail application moved by Arsho PM, the State Secretary of the Students' Federation of India, who was taken into custody for the second time after he violated the bail conditions imposed upon him. Justice Viju Abraham heard both the counsels extensively before reserving orders in the bail application. The judge also already remarked that the decision would be pronounced next week. The 27-year-old SFI leader was the second accused in a case where a group of people trespassed into a residence of the de facto complainant in 2018 with an intention to commit culpable homicide and attacked him with deadly weapons causing injuries. A plea has been moved before the Madhya Pradesh High Court seeking the registration of an FIR against actress Karina Kapoor for allegedly hurting the religious sentiments of the Christian community in her book titled Karina Kapoor Khan's Pregnancy Bible, The Ultimate Manual for Moms to Be. The plea has been moved by a practicing advocate, Christopher Anthony, submitting that Kapoor has used the word Bible in the title of her book, thereby hurting the sentiments of the people of the Christian community. The plea came before the bench of Justice Dinesh Kumar Paliwal on August 3rd, wherein the petitioner was directed to implead state as a party and the matter was posted for further hearing after six weeks. Today, the Delhi High Court refused to pass a gag order, barring legal news portals from reporting on the ongoing suit filed by YouTuber Gaurav Taneja, popularly known as the Flying Beast, against Mint newspaper and its columnist Shafali Bhatt over an alleged defamatory article published against him. Justice Amit Bansal was hearing Bhatt's application seeking to direct Taneja to remove the tweets made by him tagging her. Bhatt argued that she is receiving threats from Taneja's followers after he posted reports about the court order on Twitter, tagging her. 
At this point, YouTubers counsel advocate Raghav Avasti argued that since the updates of judicial proceedings are posted by legal news portals like Live Law and Bar and Bench, such portals must also be restrained from posting anything about the suit proceedings. However, Justice Bansal orally remarked, and I quote, I cannot pass a gag order against the media. They are not party here. Justice Sophie Thomas of Kerala High Court today recused from hearing the plea moved by CPIM leader and former MLA M. Swaraj challenging the election of the Congress candidate K. Babu from the Tripuni Thura constituency. When the matter was taken up today, Justice Thomas recused from the case citing that she was a voter of the same constituency. The matter will be placed before the Chief Justice so that he can reassign the case. While noting that a lawyer before it had used the enrollment ID of his namesake while filing the Vakalat Namana matter, the Jharkhand High Court has referred the lawyer's matter to the Bar Council of India as well as the Jharkhand State Bar Council. The bench of Justice Sanjay Kumar Devedi has directed the Bar Council of India and Jharkhand State Bar Council to look into the matter and submit a report within four weeks after which the court will take a call about the lodging of a first information report or an FIR against a delinquent lawyer named Rajiv Lochan. The Kerala High Court today directed its registry to accept two petitions challenging the centre's Agnipath recruitment scheme for armed forces that were flagged as defective on point of maintainability. This comes after the Kochi bench of the Armed Forces Tribunal refused to hear the challenge. Justice Anu Sivaraman, after hearing the arguments raised by the advocates, directed the registry to number the cases and place them for admission before the bench on the next day. Thank you. Keep watching Courts Today on Live Law for more such updates.